Hello everybody and welcome to the 2018 MotoGP eSport Championship. After an incredible debut season in 2017, we're back in action for this year and how exciting it is to be back. Now, four months ago, we kicked off this season with four challenges for the gamers to participate in. All across the world, they are here this weekend, the 12 fastest, and we'll be whittling that down to just six. And to enjoy this first semi-final alongside me is Amy Dargan. Amy, good evening, welcome, and great to have you along. Lots to look forward to tonight. We'll shortly reveal who the fastest 12 men were from the first set of online challenges before they battle out here tonight. But we should also mention, if you missed your spot in tonight's semi-final, do not panic. Another opportunity is coming up for you. More on that later on. But first, Tom, I feel like we're missing someone. Amy, I am up here in what I've dubbed the bird's nest here at a very sunny and rather toasty Mizano, ready and waiting to see what happens in and unfolds in tonight's eSports semi-final in Mizano. Now, it's pretty spacious up here. Uh, Tom, there's a seat next to me and it's got your name on it. Tom, before you disappear off to join Matt, I think we need to find out what our contestants have had to do to make it here this evening. This was the 2018 road to the MotoGP eSports semi-final one. Well, Amy, it's not been an easy or a short road. The competition began at the end of July. The first challenge was riding Mark Marquez's Repsol Honda around one of his favorite circuits of the Americas in Austin. As you can see from the 18th to the 22nd of July is when that took place. Challenge number two was at the end of July. That was on Bradley Smith's KTM at the Saxon Ring circuit in Germany. Challenge three was the only nighttime challenge we have at the Los Angeles National Circuit in Qatar on Alessia Spargaro's Aprilia. And the fourth challenge was the Suzuki of Andrea Iannone around the Red Bull Ring in Austria. It really has been a very exciting road here so far, and we're about ready for that to continue here tonight. This year, the challenges have been available on even more platforms. In addition to PlayStation, our gamers here this evening have also been able to access the MotoGP game on Xbox and PC. You may be interested to know that everybody tonight is playing the PC version of the game with games controllers. The fear is like how realistic it is. Even what you can see, the fans, you know, in the grandstands, like everything's exactly how you would you would imagine. The more I play this game, the better I'm getting. Like, I might start getting addicted. This year, the graphics are incredible, especially the, the color, because now a lot of riders use the fluo colors, and I know that uh, for the TV and uh, for the video game is difficult, but uh, are quite precise, and uh, and I like it. Well, it's fantastic is the, the evolution that this video game is having each by, year by year is, is impressive. You need to be more precise with, with everything, with the brake, with the, with the throttle, with the gears. You cannot make mistakes. All the colors, the bike uh, position, uh, looks very, 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 very similar. But uh, I need more laps to understand. I'm very bad about the lines. <laughs> this year is really really realistic and the graphics are unbelievable actually I'm in shock because um, it's difficult sometimes to to feel the difference between the reality and the game um, the bike is perfect the circuit is perfect uphill downhill so improving a lot it's a, it's a good game to play with your friends you know you can t-bone them even if you're not so fast you start to hit them and, and you can still win the race <laughs> And there's no race direction, which makes it <laughs> even better. Bello, is good. 18 is good. I never tried before. When I start with a new game, the, the first uh, one hour, I take other rider. Because, because I make a lot of mistakes, a lot of crashes. <laughs> and when I'm ready, I take myself. <laughs> So it certainly looks like the MotoGP riders on the grid were fans of the game. That was a quick teaser as to what they've been up to, but perhaps, Amy, not quite to the same standards as our 12 semi-finalists here tonight. We'll have to wait and see. Now, listen, only six men will make it through to the grand finale in Valencia. The nerves, the excitement are about to get cranked up a notch. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet our first lot of semi-finalists. 
Absolutely right there, Amy. And for our first challenge, which as we saw was Mark Marquez's Repsol Honda around the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, please welcome our PlayStation winner, Andrew ZH, our Xbox winner, and last year's world champion, no less, Trastevere 73, and our PC winner from Great Britain, Swomi. Please take your seats here this evening. From our second challenge, please take a seat. Our PlayStation winner, Adrian26. Our Xbox winner, Juan NH16. And our PC winner, Luigi48GP. Well, we'll let them take their seats for our third challenge. Please take a seat. Our PlayStation winner, Christian MM17. Our Xbox competitor, the top competitor from this challenge. That was Timothy McGarden, 61. And the PC winner was Ivan Ivea. And from the fourth challenge, please take a seat. The PlayStation winner, Ellie Ghost 555. The Xbox winner, Iotti for Rossi, and the PC winner, Paul IG. Well, they've all taken their seats tonight, and we wish every single one of them the very best of luck. But we need to give them a bit of time to get prepared and get them on their A game, so to speak, Amy. Well, whilst they get themselves set up, let's take a look at what they've been up to so far here in Mizano. Something tells me. They're pretty big MotoGP fans. Well, that looks like a fine way to start the weekend, if you ask me. Now, listen, we are almost ready for our first battle of the evening. It is almost time for qualifying. But before we say too much, Matt, Tom, we're coming over to you in commentary. Thank you very much there, Amy. And welcome up to the commentary box then. And I say we, uh, because alongside me is the voice of Moto2 and Moto3 free practice commentary. It's Matt Dunn. Matt, great to have you here. These guys, though, they've been pretty busy over the last few days. Yeah, it's been very busy indeed. I'm sure with you and me in the commentary box, everybody is regretting watching this in HD. But enough of that. <laughs> it's not, uh, I can't wait to see what's going to be happening later on today. Qualifying, followed by the race. But of course, it's not actually the first time these competitors have been in this arena. They've been here just as long as the riders have. Whilst they've been getting in the practice on the track, these guys have been getting in the practice off it, getting used to the arena and their surroundings. Uh, and, well, 
I also hope they've remembered the rules and uh, warnings that the race director gave them. Got to be on your best behaviour in this esports game. Certainly have there, Matt. You're absolutely right there. We saw last year in the uh, season finale in Valencia, of course, race direction coming down like a ton of bricks on some riders who were exceeding track limits and perhaps just pushing that limit a little bit too far. So they've been getting some tips from race direction. And uh, speaking of tips as well, let's uh, have a little look at a video because Danilo Petrucci, of course, last year here nearly took his maiden MotoGP win. It wasn't to be for him, but he certainly knows this Mazzano world circuit, Marco Simoncelli, pretty well. So we are in Misano, turn one is a uh, right one. We then uh, immediately a left and a right, are three corners in a row. Very, very difficult. You have to, to stay quite tight to the curb. Then uh, turn four is an art breaking area. And uh, with turn five is uh, an unique corner. You have to be on the right. Then uh, this corner six is very important because there is a long straight. And this is the hard breaking area of turn uh, Quercia, the name is. Uh, it's a left-hander. Then uh, there is turn eight and nine and uh, the name is, Stra is uh, Tramonto, Sunshine. Very, very important because there is uh, one big straight. At the end, there is uh, a long corner. Very, very fast in sixth gear. I'm a little bit slow. Then all, all right, and uh, at the end, we have uh, uh, an airpin. And then the last two left, Misano 1 and Misano 2. Very, very flowing and, uh, and fast. And this is the last corner. But I go out of track and uh, my lap was not valid. <laughs> so, uh, I'm very happy to see you fighting. I hope uh, in Misano will be a very good battle and uh, it's important because last time uh, an Italian won and uh, I hope in Valencia to see another uh, Italian uh, e-rider winning the, the eSports championship. Ciao. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen that should be, please join in welcoming to the stage Danilo Petrucci. Now, now, the first thing I was going to ask you was, nice, uh, nice game face there. Is that the same face that is under the helmet when you're out there on track? <laughs> no, I, I just discovered that uh, I'm uh, much, much faster on a real bike than uh, on video games, and it's quite strange for a normal people. <laughs> but uh, I, I was not so well trained. Just the first lap was... I was impressed, I'm not going to lie. The other thing I was rather impressed is that you were able to speak whilst gaming. Now, was that, was that the reality? Could you do the onboard commentary? Uh, it was, was quite difficult to, to do the, the lap with the, with the joystick and uh, do the commentary. And uh, yeah, I think at least the, the worst thing I did was uh, driving the bike because I speak so well. <laughs> I ride the bike quite well, but uh, playing e sport I discovered was not. Uh, I have a really, really, really fun, but uh, uh, I think this guy has, has, are really, really much faster than me. I think you're being modest. So listen, we are here in Mazzano. It's an important race weekend for you. How has it been going so far? Um, quite well. We have not been here for testing, so we have to uh, close the gap to the to the guys uh, uh, who have been tested here. But uh, we are we are there. We are not so far. And uh, today we are we are in sixth position. We, we have some areas to improve, so I'm quite confident for tomorrow. And uh, the target for today was to, to be in the top 10 because with this weather, we don't know if it's going to rain or not. Uh, so at least we are safe. I, I can go sleep quite, uh, quite relaxed. But uh, if tomorrow will be dry, the, there is always a pre-qualifying in FP3. And, uh, but I think we are ready. 
Today we've been really lucky with the weather, but Danilo, you don't really strike me as someone who's going to be too upset if we get a little bit of rain tomorrow. You're pretty good in the wet here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I'm quite good. Uh, uh, everyone is expecting me very, very fast uh, under the rain. But uh, yeah, I'm quite fast, but uh, I, I am always scared to crash. I don't know uh, where or when I crash on the rain. For maybe for that reason, I'm faster than, uh, than anyone. That uh, I, don't, I don't understand where, when I'm going to crash. <laughs> well, you've given us a few tips there on the video game, but these guys are getting extremely close to qualifying time now. So any, any last minute bits of advice for everyone? No, if they they see me playing, uh, they don't uh, they don't uh, accept, accept advice from me. <laughs> I, I only say best of luck to, to them, and uh, I I watch very very with with a lot of fun. The, the final last year in Valencia was uh, like a a, a a final. It was a, a really really race and. Uh, was was very funny, and uh, I hope to, today to, to see a, a, another qualifying and, uh, and a race, and uh, a very, very good one. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you drop by here uh, with us tonight. Good luck for qualifying, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Ciao. Ladies, Danilo Petrucci, thank you. Right. Right, so I believe it's uh, time to... <laughs> I was going to actually compliment Danilo Petrucci and say that, well, these guys better pay attention to all those tips, but maybe only tips <laughs> actually on the actual track. Not, uh, it seems like these guys could teach him a lesson instead. Yeah, it certainly does there, Matt, as you say. And uh, Danilo Petrucci, of course, a rider who really does know this Mazzano World Circuit, Marco Simoncelli, quite well. Not quite as well as our 12 finalists who are here this evening, though, as well. They've been practising left, right and centre over the last few days, haven't they, Matt? They've been pretty busy. Yeah, yeah, very busy indeed. Lots of practice time and, well, yeah, like you say, I think they could probably teach Danilo a few things or two, a couple of red balls down. Keep yourself stimulated and we'll be ready for qualifying. So, but uh, we'll be getting qualifying way underway pretty soon. But uh, who's your money on for this one, Tom? Well, it's hard really to look past the likes of Trastevere last year, Mandzukic as well. He finished runner-up. Trastevere, of course, last year's world champion. There's a few new faces in there as well. We've got four new riders on the grid for this first semi-final. And as Amy said earlier on as well, let's not forget that uh, even if they don't make it through to the top six here, they've got that chance for that second semi-final taking place in October at the uh, eSports Center in Madrid. It's going to be pretty exciting, that, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, and also a special holiday to Madrid. I mean, who wouldn't want that? So maybe someone's going to play a blinder <laughs> here and, uh, you know, try and get a second holiday out of it. I'd prefer a weekend in Madrid, not going to lie. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we would, wouldn't we all? Wouldn't we all? You can see the gamers there on your screen at the moment. They're getting themselves psyched up and ready. There is the reigning champion, Trasteverde. He's lined up. He's ready. He's been a busy boy over the last few months as well, especially in the immediate aftermath of the MotoGP Esports fight final in Valencia. And uh, it's about time then to get qualifying underway here this evening. So without further ado, let's head over and get ready to go for qualifying. So here we are then at the Mazzano World Circuit, Marco Simoncelli. Yes, absolutely. A great uh, example of just the quality of the graphics that we have here in uh, the 2018 game. Some excellent shots from all over the world. This will be Kota. Yep, Just absolutely. Looking at the Red Bull ring in Austria as well. A fantastic circuit. One, of course, that's always full of drama. Likewise, the Saxonry as well. That unpredictable climate. Qatar, the only night race we have on the calendar, kicking off the 2018 season. The riders, though, heading out of pit lane. It's a 10-minute qualifying session. At the end of those 10 minutes, of course, we'll decide and we'll know who is going to be lining up where on the grid. We should state that the riders have uh, chosen the bikes that they were on. They chose that yesterday afternoon. So you can see them all heading out of pit lane and getting ready to go onto the circuit for the first time. Now, uh, a couple of things to mention here as well as they go out onto the track. Of course, dry weather conditions, as you can see, if they do come off their bike at any time, they'll be reset. Of course, that lap will be invalidated. They'll have to go around and do that again. And with only a 10 minute timer here, Matt, on the clock, it really does mean that the pressure is on. Yeah, a, uh, a very short time limit and about a 125, 26 second lap or so. They really cannot afford to uh, crash too many times on this one. 
No, nope, certainly can't. Well, we're riding on board then. This is the reigning world champion, Trastevere 73. He chose the factory Ducati, a bike that's been working quite well for him so far. In the free practice session we had yesterday, the free practice sessions we've had so far today, it's been very tight in terms of the times, but Trastevere has pretty much dominated all of them. He was fastest earlier on this afternoon in the sessions. Yeah, and I tell you what, did he actually see some mind games yesterday in the bike choice? A few guys, they really wanted certain machines. I saw someone really wanted that Avintia Ducati, but no, someone else got it before him. He finished quicker than he did in the free practice sessions. So you see mind games out on the track. We've seen plenty, especially in that press conference on Thursday. And it's no different here in MotoGP Esports. Absolutely. One thing to mention as well is that all of these guys, great sportsmanship between them. We saw all the uh, gamers going around, shaking each other's hands before we went live earlier on this afternoon. We're just looking at the riders coming over the timing line and sending their first representative lap times. That's Andrew ZH on the Repsol Honda. He's in front on the Aprilia. You can see just behind as well. Well, that is the uh, number 48. That's Luigi 48 GP, a rider who will be familiar to you if you are a fan of the MotoGP Esport Championship in 2017. Italian rider, Italian motorcycle, and Italian circuit. Seems like a bit of a Oh, we have a heaven. crash in the background there, Tom. That was us, oh, Trastevere. That's He's the reigning champion. Yeah, he's gone down, so in the opening sector, it's a very tight and twisty first sector here at Mazzano Mass as well. Very easy to tuck the front. One thing uh, as well that we should mention on this MotoGP 18 video game is that uh, as we've got another crash as well, that's Mandzukic down again, or Christian MM17 as he's known this year. He's just uh, tucked the front Come once on, Tom, more. that was so last year. <laughs> Absolutely, but uh, back up to date with this year. Um, but uh, as we were saying, yeah, the MotoGP 18 video game really is incredibly realistic. The physics have taken a brilliant step forward, and the riders are saying, you really don't know when you're going to tuck the front it's very much more like riding a real motorcycle no you really don't and on this huge screen we've got in front of us you can really see the effect that the bumps have on this circuit as well just like that out on the real one just a couple of uh, hundred meters to our right uh, it is really really tricky just as in the game as it can be out in real life as well and Tom I can't help but notice as well I love the customization that they have on these bikes with the game you really can customize pretty much everything your helmet your number your boots uh, pink, bit of an outward choice there, but I dig it. Seems to be working for Juan NH16, though he's gone for the top of the time sheets. The first rider since the set of representative lap time, but the Repsol Honda of Andrew ZH has gone immediately faster as well. Lap time's coming in pretty thick and fast now. Just to mention, the tower graphic on the left-hand side of your screen as well, where you can see the red triangles under their names. That means that that lap time has been disallowed for one reason or another. That could be due to a crash, or it could be due to them exceeding track limits. And it's speaking of having a crash as well, Ellie Ghost 555, a new name for this year. He's had a slight crash on his uh, first flying lap there. So a bit of a shame for him, but uh, let's see if he is going to be able to try and turn things around in the last five minutes of this session. Yeah, six or so minutes to go at the moment. I tell you what, I've not seen a, a fluorescent yellow on, the, on a Repsol Honda like that for some years. Oh, Trastevere has gone down again. Uh, whereabouts is that down at, did it say turn three? I think it is. He'll be restarting shortly. He can't, uh, we said this at the beginning of the, uh, the session, uh, Tom, we cannot afford for these guys to have too many crashes because it's just one more invalidated lap, one minute 20 odd to get round, one minute 26, one of the fastest laps so far. Five minutes left. Hey, that's what three laps left you can get. Absolutely, yeah, maximum. Really, they're going to be uh, really harrying these bikes around, trying to set those fastest lap times and trying not to push themselves too far past the limit here as well. Looking at the Alma Pramac Ducati, this is Ivan Evea. He's down in 11th position here so far. A name again that was in the final in Valencia last year. He's set fastest times in the first sector, fastest time in the second sector, personal best in that third sector. And as he comes out of the final corner here and over the timing line, what is he going to be able to do in? In terms of lap times, Ivan Avea, well, he does improve and he goes up to the outside of the front row in third position. Hey, Tom, keep your eye on Christian MM17 coming out the final corner as well. He's going on to the, uh, into the final sector and he's the one who goes top now on the Angel Nieto team Ducati. That is a really quick time, 126. 2-6-0, but look at these guys, they're all putting personal best sectors in now. It's uh, well, it's all coming down to crunch time, really. Squeaky bum time, as Sir Alex Ferguson would say. Absolutely right, and you can see on that oh, tower graphic. Oh, he's gone oh. down, that's Christian MM17, but he's straight up and back going, of course, because he's in the video game. And uh, he's in guilt, that's his invalidated lap, though. First sector, he's got to go all the way round, back to start and finish straight again. Not good news for Otto Ferrossi either. 
Yep, same crash for him as well. You can see on that tower graphic as well, it does give you the uh, gaps between the different rides. It gives sector times and also gives the lap time after they have set it. You can see Christian MM17, the fastest man in this session. He is five hundredths of a second faster than Andrew ZH at the moment. Here is Ivan Avea then, knocked off the front row, heading the second row of the grid at the moment on board this Alma Pramet Ducati through those decreasing radius right-handers, looking pretty handy here as well. Yeah, and just look at that on your timing screens. How many invalidated lap times are these guys on at the moment? It's really not looking good. It's clearly feeling a bit of the pressure. This is their first time turning a wheel in anger on the esports game, so to speak, here in, uh, in Misano. But, well, got a couple of minutes left now. How yep. much can these guys deal with the pressure? Some more personal best sectors coming in. Costa Verde is on some red sectors as well. That's looking pretty impressive from him. He goes top now. Brilliant stuff from the reigning champion. Then he is to the top of the timing sheets with just over three and a half minutes remaining of this session. Trastevere, 73, hits the front. Ellie goes 555 as well on a personal best. What's he going to be able to do? Improves in time, but not position. Riding on board with the reigning champion, harrying that Ducati GP18 Ooh. through the first sector. Christian MM17, second on the grid. He's gone down again, though. And I tell you what, I know it just looks kind of spectacular. I mean, you've got that change of direction there. The front wheel comes in the air. But that's what the riders were talking about in that VT before this. It's a very realistic game. You can lose the front there if you're getting a bit too throttle happy on the uh, changeover of direction there. Certainly can do. It really can put pay. More invalidated lap times coming in. Luigi 48 GP at the moment. He is having an absolute shocker, Matt, down in seventh position on the third row of the grid is where he will line up if it finishes as it is, but he's got another invalidated lap time. He's going to have to pull out all the stops here with just a maximum of two flying laps in. Ivan Avella has also had a crash. He just put that was pulled up and down at turn 11. I think that was the very, very fast right-hander. Saw Moto 3 bikes going through there today. Completely full throttle, Max Lee. Absolutely awesome, that was. Got the final turn here. Fastest final sector for Andrew Z8 set, uh, on the... Uh, Repsol Honda over the line he goes and he goes to the top of the timesheets by 1.6 tenths of a second so it's the Repsol Honda on pole position what can Trastevere 73 do though can he spoil the party of Honda he can as he comes over the line but he can't because he loses a bit of time in that final sector and it's just three hundredths of a second separating those top two now yeah but I must say this does look as though if the form is anything like this in the race could it be a two horse race have we got a Moto3 style battle between Martin and Bezeki is it going to be like Oliveira and Bangnaia two guys going at it hammer and tong although two tenths a lap well we'll have to see but we've got two more crashes there that was swomi who just went down where did he go down was that in the first sector as well could have been yep it's a very popular place to go down for swomi there so disappointment for him he's down in ninth position so far the only britain on the grid here this weekend i was chatting to him before we got underway this afternoon asking him exactly how he felt he said he was pretty calm pretty confident but still a few nerves jangling there and the last thing you want to do is make a if you're qualifying because you're certainly going to be knowing about it come race time later on this evening. We're on board with the Suzuki, that's Adrian 26, going through the ever-decreasing radius, right-handers fully banked over. Absolute commitment from the Suzuki rider then. And what is he going to be able to do at the moment in this stage of the session? It's not much because he's dropped time in that second sector. He's dropped time in that third sector. He's just going to have one more flying lap here, Matt. Yeah, and they've got to watch that turn 15 as well. Plenty of riders in that final sector. It's causing a lot of problems for riders out in free practice today. Saw a fair few crashes down there. Can we see any more in this particular session? One minute to go. Luigi 48 GP improves. He's up to seventh position on the Rebel KTM and a crash as well. That's one NH16 that has gone down. So Juan is not number one at the moment. He is going to have... Oh, God, Neil made that joke earlier. It's even worse now. <laughs> Well, there you go, and uh, he's going to have some serious work to do to pull himself out of the deficit, and in fact, he won't have any time to do that because, of course, the clock is counting down. That was his final flying lap, so he's going to be starting from the very, very back of the grid here for Juan. That's big disappointment. Ivan Avey has gone down on his final lap as well. Sixth position will be the best of asking then for Ivan. Out of the final corner comes Iotti for Rossi. Italian on Italian bike. Yeah. Over the line. What's and he going to be able to do? Nothing really, unfortunately. Stays 11th fastest. Hey, Tom, these guys, they're all going to... You've got four, five, six, seven seven maybe guys there who are all on invalid laps including the reigning champion and there's no way they're making it round in five seconds this could be over top yeah this is looks like it's going to be deciding the grid as you say there matt we're looking at luigi 48 gp he's one of the only three riders four riders who hasn't invalidated their lap oh! time so far but he's gone down oh luigi 48 gp on what could have potentially been a bit of a spoil to the party throws it all the way in that third and final sector of the lap and he will start at best seventh position as the checkered flag is now out let's have a look at a replay here matt talk us through just completely lost the front end looked a little bit wide on entry too much front brake 
the front and good night. You are starting from a little bit down the order for the race. Yep, comes out of the line, out of the final corner and over Quality the line. Big wheelie really there for Trastevere. Tell you what, Iotti for Rossi actually, personal best lap time. He got over the line just before that chequered flag came out here, Matt. We ride on board with the Aprilia rider and he is looking very handy here. He's improving in time on a personal best. Will it bump him a little bit further up the order than second to last on the grid through that final sector? That Aprilia RSGP, a little bit wide through the right, right hander. Could that be his undoing here? Well, we should know he made it safely through there. Did he take too much curb there? He has. He's invalidated he the lap. Oh, yep. no. What a disaster. Well, I only take a little bit too much curb on the final corner as well. But a solid wheelie over the line. Uh, could do with a little bit of improvement there. But what a session that was. These guys are feeling the pressure, Tom. Let's get a look at the results. Absolutely. Very exciting. So final confirmation then. Andrew ZH on the Repsol Honda is on pole position. Trastevere 73, Christian MM 17 completes your front row. Row two headed by El Ghost 555, Adrian 26 in the Luigi 48 GP. Alongside him, Ivan Avea, Timothy McGarden, Suomi on row three. And the final row of the grid, Paul IG, Iotti Ferrossi. And as we saw there at the back of the grid as well, the final rider making it up, that's one NH16. So that is the grid. That is how it will sit ahead of semi-final one here this evening, Matt. Yes, and, oh, what a session that was. And some pretty elaborate times there, all in those 126s. Uh, but how will they manage to like close in on those tents throughout the race? And clearly pressure getting to a lot of people. This could be a bit of a crash fest, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Those first couple of sectors are going to be very, very important here, Matt, this evening. So let's see what we're going to be able to do. A bit of a slug of war there for Trastevere 73 as he just gets himself ready to go. We're going to be having a look at some highlights from this session here, Matt, as well. Trying to find out the best bits and see what has happened over the course of that 10-minute qualifier. Well, I'll tell you what, a lot did happen. Obviously, the riders all left the track and straight for an outlap. Only a 10-minute session, uh, but so many invalidated laps so early on. In this first sector, you've got to be very, very uh, cautious around there, especially on an outlap. The tyres could be the quite cool, easy, yeah, easy yeah. to let go. And also, well, talk about feeling the pressure. How sweaty are your hands getting throughout this sort of thing? We saw someone last year, can't exactly remember who it was, wearing gloves to uh, contact, combat some anti-sweat. There's Trastevere, the, uh, the reigning champion there on the Ducati. Although that was Christian MM17 coming very, very close, close behind him. He has really got Thursday. that turn no 10 here, dialed here in. Here we are coming into the final corner. And that Aprilia, Iota Ferrossi there coming across the finish line to start those uh, the first flying lap or so. It is a long lap round here in Misano, 126 seconds, uh, 1 minute 26, and uh, we're only 10 minutes. Well, a bit stuff there, and it, we can see uh, I could do with some of that tape on my nose as well to keep my glasses from slipping down in this sort of heat. And we saw a big crash there from Christian MM17. That was one of his invalidated laps. Pretty much the story of qualifying these invalidated laps. Uh, exceeding track limits, crashing, feeling the pressure. You, you can, these guys, they can cut a little bit more curb than the, uh, their on-track uh, uh, well, co-workers, you might say, uh, as they're not going to lose so much grip. Got a look at those concentrated faces. Trastevere thundering down the back straight on that high horsepower Ducati. At this point, we were down at three minutes to go. It looks as though Heat was going to get pole at this particular time. Very, very treacherous. Turn eight. And don't forget as well, just like in the, on the real bikes as well, that left-hander, it's a long time between that and the final left-handers we have in the final sector. Just before the finish line, easy to let the front wind go. And here we are, we're going to be crossing the finish line, and that was qualifying. So, we're going to be ready to race pretty soon, Tom and Amy. We are indeed, but first things first, We've got, a whole, we've got to deliver our poleman his award. So please join me here on the stage, our poleman here in Mazzano, Andrew ZH. And let's give him a round of applause. That was a brilliant effort. Andrew, this weekend we're keeping things as close as possible to a normal MotoGP weekend. So for your efforts there in qualifying, we have our lovely lady here to hand you your TSO T-Race MotoGP 2018 Special Edition watch. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, well done and good luck for the race now. 
tell you what, it really doesn't get much better than that, does it, Amy? Congratulations to Andrew ZH. He will start then on pole position ahead of the first semi-final coming up in just a few moments' time. Now, we had a look at the MotoGP riders on the MotoGP 18 video game earlier on this evening. However, we saw them going around the circuit in a pretty controlled manner, but it doesn't always quite go according to plan for them, as we're now going to have a look at. Pronto, pronto, uno, due, tre, mi sentito? In the face. Así me voy a viciar y me voy a quedar aquí toda la tarde. Fica, fica, nada, fica, normal que ya... Awesome, but I'm not like that. That's, a, that's an ugly face if I've ever seen one. Es muy heavy. Feliz. Míralo. Saludando y todo. Bien. Turn 12. I, I crash. Qué mal. Pues es un big uphill, but then, oy, oy, oy. Bien. Here, here I have my friend over there. And there it left. Oh no. A very bad play. Yow. Oh dear. No. some extremely strange noises coming out of those riders there. I'm wondering if any of you guys uh, make similar sounds. Hopefully not. But anyway, it's almost time for the main piece of business here this evening. We are getting ready to race. How are you guys feeling? Fingers wiggling? Hopefully not too much. Right, Matt, Tom, it's back down to you. It's race time. Well, Amy, thank you very much. And we're back up here in the commentary box then, ready for what is set to be an absolutely corking race here this evening, Matt. It was very close in qualifying, lots of unpredictability coming in, quite a few crashes essentially there as well. So uh, there's so much to talk about before we get this one underway. And let's, where do we start? Well, so much to talk about, so little time, in pole position, Andrew ZH, but the times are pretty tight. Through 126 is throughout, but that inconsistency, these guys cutting lap times, getting it, getting it a bit too close to the apex. Race direction might have to get involved, maybe a few too many crashes. What about those sweaty palms? It's pretty hot up here. I could probably do with a few tissues. Don't know about these guys, they probably need to call off as well beforehand. <laughs> Absolutely right there, Matt. These guys getting themselves pretty primed and ready. And uh, special uh, mention to Ivan Avea as well, because he's managed to combat that problem with a pair of gloves, which hopefully we'll see a bit of a close-up. Oh, he has got the gloves of, now. He has got the gloves, uh, Someone yeah. did last year, but yeah, I that was the same was. guy. Oh, there you it go. the same guy, and he's got the gloves. You can see them there, a bit of a close-up to these gloves. That stops the sweaty nice. palms on uh, those game pads. Hey, we better finish up quick, because he's got to go and uh, sort out a snooker game after this. <laughs> he <laughs> certainly <laughs> has. He's going to be... Gonna, uh, it's not a referee and snooker, I can't remember what the term is now, but uh, he'll be getting himself primed and ready, as are we here in the commentary box. It's going to be a 10-lap race here at the Mazzano World Circuit, Marco Simoncelli. As we mentioned earlier on, the top six from this semi-final will automatically progress through to that grand final in Valencia. It does make it very exciting, and of course, let's not forget that if they finish from 7th down to 12th, they've still got another chance to qualify in the following four challenges for the second semi-final event, taking place at the uh, Movistar Esports Centre in Madrid at the start of October. Yeah, well, what on earth is about to unfold in front of our very eyes? Let's find out. It is race time here in Mizano. So, 10 laps then of semi-final one here at the, Mo the uh, Mazzano World Circuit. Marco okay, Simoncelli out, here in Italy. Revs will be rising. Wait for those red lights to come on on the top of your screen. Andrew ZH, Trastevere 73 and Christian MM17 on the front row of your grid. Red lights on then here at Mazzano. And it is going to be lights out. And away we go. And a very good start from the front row of the grid. But a brilliant getaway as well for Trastevere 73. And also, as well, Christian MM17. Oh, he takes the lead. Oh. And down to the first corner. Oh, oh, oh Sorterman is down there. Oh, dearie me. Oh, with another one down at Turtus Adria. 26. It, it's absolutely... 
absolute carnage in Mizano. Slow me's down. The Briton has gone down. About three riders down in the first couple of corners. Exactly what we feared here in Mizano. But the upshot is that Christian MM17 leads the way. And Luigi 48 GP, who started way back on the third row of the grid, is having a second place. Oh, oh my that. goodness. They've just been sent into space. They're going to say hi to our mate Drew Fustel. Oh, oh my goodness. Dear, oh dear. Well, Luigi 48 GP is kept to go ahead. He's still in second place on that Red Bull KTM by Ellie Ghost 555 up there in third position on the Mobby Star Yamaha. Further back, you can see quite a big gap already very pronounced at the top of your screen. Just to mention on the uh, tower graphic on the left hand side of your screen, the riders' names who are in white, the top six, will be going through to the grand final in Valencia. If they're seventh downwards, that means that they will not be progressing upwards at this stage. Hey man, we were talking about pressure, and the, well, Christian MM17, he's got both the most pressure on his shoulders right now and also the least. How much can he keep his cool? He was pretty fast last year. So, and he's got quite a gap out there at the moment. He has actually increased that gap. Eight tenths of a second right now. Can he keep his head cool? One of the riders we didn't mention, Matt, who went down in that first corner melee was Trastevere 73. So the reigning champion, as you can see, at the bottom of the order at the moment, not where the Italian wanted to be. He's going to have to put out some serious legwork at the moment. Speaking of legwork as well, 10th position and overtake there. Paul IG making his way up the order. He's now ahead of Iotti Ferrossi. So the number seven moves his way up into the top 10 for the first time in this race. You can see the bottom of the left corner of your screen, that's race direction. They are keeping a very keen eye on track limits. And it's just to mention as well, when these riders come over the timing line, if there are any penalties to be handed out, they will be subject to race directions viewing. Yeah, so exactly. We'll be going through the race results, but they will be subject to review from the race director. Won't, we'll have to wait till he confirms those uh, positions. But he had a warning then from Iotto Ferrossi. He's just managed, he's got himself involved in a pretty big battle there with Paul IG. Goodness me, it's like a, an absolute ding dong battle out there. It's something like we saw in Valencia last year. Goodness me. Very, very close indeed. So coming down towards those ever decreasing radius right hand corners down the back straight in towards turn 11. A very fast corner. You can see the elbows dragging on the floor for these riders. Oh, you can see a move being move made. There. Andrew Z8 straight up the inside of Timothy McGarden. Brilliant stuff from him. Does he run it a bit wide on exit, but he gathers it up and he manages to hold on to that position. So Andrew Z8 up inside the top four. That's enough for him. It doesn't matter really where he finishes inside the top six. He's just got to make his way up through the order, as has Trastevere 73, Matt. He's up into 11th place. Yeah, that was such a quality move. Really messed up his line after that. You can see it. He really couldn't get his way around the corner on the proper line that he wanted. Square it up. Fastest lap, though. Oh, that was for Luigi 48 GP, but before that, Christian MM17. That was the fastest lap for him. Uh, so very, very impressive. But that change over there, though, hey, taking a bit too much curve there. Got to watch that. Race direction might have to get involved. Absolutely right. We're looking at Andrew ZH then. This is your pole sitter now in fourth position. Just behind him is the LCR Honda of Timothy McGarden. Missed out on a top three position last year. Did the German rider. Somebody running well, well wide in the background. That was one NH16. And just to show how unpredictable this race has been, one started down in 12th position. And he's now up inside the top six. Here's Trastevere, though, making a move on Iotti for Rossi again these guys having a right ding dong battle as they come down in towards turn number eight he gets the move done but these guys pretty evenly matched for pace and the problem here is Matt they're squabbling amongst one another they're not making that progress through the field that they need to be well exactly but you've got to be in front in order to actually make uh, make some kind of hayway up the field but look at this they're, they're the whole length of the back straight back from first position oh three lap three seven laps to go six laps to go I'm not sure if they can do it at all no, it's going to be very, very tight indeed. Iotti Ferrotti then down in last position. Meanwhile, the leader on board the number 63, that's Christian MM17. He's got a clear track in front of him. He's not got too much of a threat from behind as well. Luigi 48 GP there in second position. He's got more close company. Ellie goes 555 and Andrew ZH nipping at his heels as Ellie goes 555 also sets the fastest lap last time around. The Movistar Yamaha rider is looking very menacing as we look behind the race leader at the moment here, Matt. It's it's probably going to be a case of when and not if he thinks about a move. Yeah, absolutely. Meanwhile, you got Christian MM17 Ooh, heading over. Wide. Oh, he has gone wide. Oh, that's really messed it all up for him there, isn't it? It's completely messed up this first sector, and it's pretty much one line through there. If you mess it all up coming onto the back straight, you really, really missed out on that run down to the tight left-hander. Yeah, absolutely. So he has sold himself a dummy, unfortunately, outbreaks himself in towards turn number four. Another warning for Juan Ene, 16. He's in sixth position currently. If he gets a penalty from race direction here, if he finishes in sixth place, that could potentially 
knock him down outside of that all-important top six. It really is important Ooh, to just keep your nose a bit there. clean. That, uh, that turn 10 sort of uh, corner there, that little complex we have uh, just before the back straight, very, very tricky. You can really mess up your uh, fire out onto the uh, back straight. Look at this though, running wide on those curves. And it's so bumpy through there from dead 11. Uh, fast right hander, pretty much flat out in MotoGP Esports. Andrew ZH there just exceeding track limits a little bit as he went through turn number 12. The elbow was very much on the inside of the curve there. You can still see on that graphic on the right hand side of your screen, Iossi Ferosti and Trastevere 73 still going side by side for most of the part and they are battling pretty heavily at the moment as we now come into the halfway stage of this race. Yeah, very, very clear as well that Christian MM17 is in a proper rhythm now. Uh, that's eight tenths again. He's maintaining that gap very, very well, keeping calm, keeping cool. And, uh, well, seems to be got a dominant lead right now ahead of Luigi 48 GP. Very impressive, though, for these riders who did come a cropper in that first corner, first lap incident really because they have made up some significant ground and you can see with the graphic on the bottom right hand side of your screen that track map there just how close they all are given what happened on that opening lap it's still very impressive regardless here's one h n h16 we've seen him have a warning from race direction we've seen an overtake as well uh for second place as well nh uh, andrew zx rather up into second now ahead of luigi 48 gp matt yeah, and well, just I was getting a bit mesmerised there by the onboard angle view, I must admit. Uh, but this is turning into a cracking little battle there for second position. Of course, like you said earlier, doesn't really matter. These guys, if they're in the top six, they're all through. They're just playing for pride. Absolutely right. You can see already the gap that Andrew ZH is pulling out. Incident between number 61, Timothy McGarden, and who else is this going to be? Number 58, Trastevere 73, last year's champion, and Luigi 48 GP under investigation. So that will be the first corner skirmish that Race Direction have had a very stiff, stiff word about. And big words as well, big drama for Ivan Evea. He has crashed on lap five and is going right down to the bottom of your timesheets here, Matt. Yeah, I'm just thinking, apart from those first laps on a melee, we've not had any crashes for a little, quite a while. Everything has sort of settled down. It just goes to prove, just like uh, the on track out there. First laps really count if they could get a little bit crazy, especially here as well. Oh, we're getting all sorts of crossed up as we're uh, trying to climb it all over the back of that KTM in this first sector. Got to be so careful here, though. Uh, that turn three, turn four or so can be really, really treacherous. Whether you're on the tarmac out there or on the game in here. So through the left hand, looking at Luigi 48 GP, nipping at his heels now is Ellie Ghost 555 on that Mobistar Yamaha. Down towards turn number eight they go. Still lining pretty astern at the moment, but let's not forget, of course, these guys going incredibly quickly, and also going incredibly quickly is this man here, Trastevere 73. He is on a right charge at the moment. He's made his way up into 10th position, but he's running out of time here to make his way up the order. He's trying to muscle his way past Paul IG. These guys oh. very familiar indeed. And here comes Iossi Ferrossi straight up the inside of Trastevere. Trastevere tries to find his way back through once again. And you can see a warning as well from race direction. He's exceeding track limits. A bit too much for their liking. This is getting very hot under the collar. Tom, he was focusing way too much on the guy in front there. He left the door wide open. And that brilliant oh! escape on the inside. Who was that? Down that was one in 16 who's gone down from sixth position. So he is going to be out of the grand final at this race here, Matt. He's going to have a lot of work to do in those last four laps. And it's Christmas come early for Adrian 26. He's now into the grand final. Tom, this is absolutely fantastic, I must admit. Uh, what a drama that we have for number 16 there. Well, you say he might be out and it might be dream over. He can still get to Madrid, mate. Yeah, he certainly can do. Of course, let's not forget the second lot of challenges as he comes and tips it into that left hand of this one. If he doesn't make it on this cut, he's got those last four challenges to make his way through. It's going to be very tight oh, indeed. Oh, that's going that. very wide. Race duration going to have to have a look at that one. That is well over track limits. And let's not forget that. Slow's first is somebody down in the background. Who was that? that oh, was and down right in front of him as well. It's a ferocity was that? It was. The Aussie no, it was Suomi. And Suomi, the Briton's gone down. So disaster for him. And Paul IG, what is happening in the latter stages of this one? It's getting very close and very, very exciting. More warnings coming in from race direction. Lots of crashes taking place all over the shop, really, as these riders are just pushing the limits that little bit too far in the order to make themselves um, up into that top six. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Tom, I think they smell blood from a one NH16 going down. They all thought, hey, there is a sixth place position here up for grabs if I can do it. Three or so laps left. Oh, and then they're just pushing those limits a little bit too much. Might have counted themselves out of the race completely. Well, they're going to have a very hard task to catch up with Adrian 26 because the nearest competitor to him now, against all the odds, is one NH16. And he's 2.1 seconds adrift 
of Adrian26 at the moment. So he's going to have a lot of work to do. Have to hope for some kind of a mistake, really, from Adrian to try and progress himself up inside that top six. No such dramas for this man here, though. The race leader, Christian MM17. He's got an eight-tenth of a second buffer over the rest of the field. He has absolutely kept that lead immaculate. He knows exactly what he's doing, running exactly the same pace as the two men behind him. Meanwhile, Luigi48 GP has managed to uh, see a little bit of daylight between himself and the man ahead. Not the little bit of daylight he would like to see by any stretch. Andrew ZH is not exactly closing in on Christian MM17. A lot of work to do, but still three or so laps left. Incredible, incredible stuff. Riding then with the Repsol Honda of Andrew ZH, your pole setter, holding on to a net second position here with just under two laps now remaining. Look at Luigi 48 GP and Ellie Ghost 555. It's been a very familiar story over the course of this race, and the KTM rider has not managed to get rid of the back of that Mobistar Yamaha over the distance of this one. We ride on board then with Ellie Ghost 555. He's attacking. You've got Luigi 48 GP in front, who will have to be defending if that gap does shrink a little bit more. Yeah, and look at this. We're riding on Ellie, on board with Ellie Ghost T555, uh, five, five even, if I could get the username out. He was running a little bit wide there on the entry to that tight right-hander. Did he lose a little bit of time there? He might have done. It just might have cost him a couple of tenths of a second, and that really is all you need here to lose a couple of tenths of a second. Swomey's had a second crash in this race, so it has been curtains then for the Briton. A very big shame for him in this first semi-final. He's going to have to hope for a, nothing short of a miracle, really, as these riders come over the line to start their penultimate lap. Timothy McGarden, though, made his way up to fifth place at the moment. He looks pretty solidly in that fifth place position. Uh, Trastevere, is it too little too late? Well, let's not forget, of course. Oh, it is oh, too little too late. He's gone down. Oh, disaster for the reigning champion. Trastevere, 73, has crashed out then. We didn't see it on screen, but we saw the graphic, and it is a tumble down the road once again, not for the first time in this race. Let's not forget as well, Matt, we were mentioning about Timothy McGarden a couple of moments ago. He is one of the riders who is under investigation by race direction as well. Yeah, very true. So we'll have to review that after the race. But Trastevere, well, well, that was a bit of a commentator's curse, I think it was. I just brought him up and he went down. Not sure if he probably heard me, but look at this man out front, Christian MM17, still not letting Andrew ZH get anywhere near him. And this is exactly what we saw last year from Christian MM17 as well. Once he was out in front, he was pretty much untouchable. He won the semi-final in Valencia last year and he finished second in the grand final right when it mattered unfortunately it didn't go too well for him it's not going too well for Swomey as well it's just a gone third from bad crash. to worse it yes. has absolute disaster for him he can go and talk with Jamba Masia later he's had a bit of a bad day as well bike cutting out on him these two can go and drown their sorrows together yep they certainly can well last lap approaching here at the Mazzano World Circuit Marco Simoncelli it's Christian MM17's race to lose nine tenths of a second is the advantage over Andrew ZH you're looking at the battle for third position between Luigi 48 GP and Ellie Ghost 555 through turn one turn he's two he's closing in on him in this first sector he is quick there this is very tight twisty one line will he dare to make a move he's going to think about it down towards turn number four surely he's going for the outside line he's going to dart his way up the inside not quite through there but he's really pushing the limits of adhesion it's going to be a case of if he gets a good exit out of oh, here oh very, very close cl very close indeed they're going to try and find a way through down into turn eight but he's had a poor run crucially onto that back straight and it's not going to be here at this point in the lap for him will he be harnessing his inner kevin swan sea guard and then break no he wasn't at that time around he's coming up to that really tight right hander complex before the back straight he's got to get a good run on there if he has any chance of taking over that KTM. Certainly is going to. Bit wide there for Luigi 48 GP as well. Could this be the Italians undoing now? He's got Eligos 555 right behind him. This is getting very exciting. And let's see what he's going to be able to do and see whether he's going to find his way past in the last couple of corners. Oh, 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 no! He goes down! They come together! Bike, his bike nearly goes to the grandstand. Absolutely unbelievable! Well, that's big, big drama there. Just pushing that little bit too hard too soon. And then he goes 555. Looks like he could be out of the grand final at the first point of asking. Out of the final corner, though, comes Christian MM17. A brilliant race and a win for the Spaniard on the Italian bike. A brilliant, brilliant performance for him. He goes through. He takes victory here. Andrew ZH finishes in second position. Luigi 48 GP in third place. Timothy McGarden finishes in fourth. Adrian 26 in fifth position and then against all the odds Ellie goes 5 by 5 despite that crash somehow held on to sixth place oh my goodness well we'll have to see what actually happens what the race director decides about those incidents who are under investigation but 
Esports delivering the drama once again. And here in Mizano, check out those final results. Well, these are provisional final results as well, Matt. Let's not forget Race Direction are going to have to have a bit of a look at some of the incidents that happened on track there. You can see further down the order, races to forget for uh, Juan N816, Trastevere 73, Iotti for Rossi, down from 10th position uh, to 12th place. All those riders from 7th down to 12th not making the cut. Unfortunately, race results to be confirmed. You can see there at the bottom of your screen, that tip is tape then means that Race Direction are going to be having a look at some of those incidents which happened on track to see whether that there are any penalties that need to be addressed. Yeah, and look at those times as well. Those are pretty, pretty quick, getting even quicker than they were in qualifying. No sorts of issues of uh, major tyre degradation for there for these guys. Really rapid time, so, so close throughout the field. What a race I was on. I'm absolutely exhausted. Can someone get me a flannel? Yeah, absolutely. We need to cool down up here in the commentary box. I'll tell you that for nothing. Juan and 16 as well. Interesting to note there, finishing seventh place just outside of that top six, as you can see. But he was one of the slower riders on track. In fact, he set the slowest lap time over the course of the race. So it doesn't necessarily mean that outright pace is what mattered in that one. It was just being really in the right place at the right time. Yeah, and it's much easier if you're following someone to break where they break and react to sort of the same time as they do. But my goodness, what drama all over the place. So many crashes in, in race direction. Take a look at the uh, maybe exceeding track limits as well. Oh, I'm just absolutely exhausted. Really, really gutted to see that those who meet down in 12th place after a disastrous final sort of sector, final part of the race. Yep, absolutely right there, Matt. And of course, the reigning champion, crucially, out of it as well. He finished down outside of the top six to Trastevere 73. A brilliant race, though, for all involved. We're going to be looking at some highlights of this in just a couple of moments' time, Matt. It's going to be a thriller. You're going to be struggling to keep up. Well, I think the reason why they're a little bit delayed right now is because there are so many highlights to choose from. <laughs> That's why it's on. But let's get a look at them then. These are the highlights. It was a cracking start, but just check out all this drama in that first sector. Absolutely unreal. Trastevere got absolutely caught up in a the pack wiped down by everybody as in that first first sort of section or so just carnage all over the place adrian 26 going down the background and the where did trevor stare uh, go down it's oh, we absolute. couldn't actually see that there was we cut out from the footage but it was christian mm17 who led the way from very very early on and i tell you what he did not look back ah it was the <laughs> it was trevor stare going down in the background then on the run onto the back straight that yamaha there though ever present in the run for the podium Still waiting for these results to be confirmed by Race Direction. Look at this, the run onto the back straight, super, super fast as we head into that right-hander. Got to be very, very careful there as to not cut track limits. Andrew ZH overtaking there, Timothy McGarden. What a move that was. Really, really neat lines on the exit there, not to be taken back by McGarden, just on the exit. Meanwhile, Christian MM17 maintaining that eight, eight tenths of a second gap throughout that first sector. Real, real masterclass it was, as Tom said. Oh, just we saw the overtakes there. Ellie goes to uh, 555, just losing out there to Luigi 48 GP. My goodness, what action we have seen there. The refs or Honda with that fluorescent yellow. Not seen that for some decades now, have we? Uh, ever present up there in the leading positions. Look at the face of concentration there. As we, uh, there's so much action throughout the field as well. Perhaps some more moves being under investigation by Race Direction. So much to go through, so much drama throughout that field. Onto the sixth lap then, and it was the KTM versus the Yamaha still battling at it. Hammer and Tong, we all know how that ended in the final lap. Near disaster for the Yamaha, but that Ducati, the reigning champion, was still trying to make his way through the field. Taking a bit too much notice of what was going on in front of him. He didn't see that Aprilia coming right up behind him, sneaking up the inside. And it was two for one because there was the Pramac Ducati up the inside of him there. Absolutely messed up his run onto the back straight completely. There was absolute drama for the Team Australia Galithia Mark VDS bike. He was down and out. That was him out the running for that particular position. Just a little bit heard of me and Tom get a little bit excited there from the highlights as well. This was the final, final sector or so. As we were in the final lap, you're about to see some major drama as we head down towards turn eight between that KTM and the Yamaha Luigi 48 GP. Just held his line securely. The Yamaha sends it, well, pretty much into space. My goodness me, how about that for last that drama? But Ellie Ghost 555 managed to keep that spot in the top six. Thank goodness for him. But it was Christian MM17 crossing the line to take a very dominant victory. He is through to Valencia. What a race we have just had here in Mizano. Still waiting for those results to be confirmed by Race Direction, though. So much to go through. And uh, yeah, I bet you need some new tape on your nose, son, as do I after that. Thank you very much for the entertainment, boys.
Very, very impressive stuff here at the Mazzano World Circuit, Marco Simoncelli. Thank you so much to Matt as well up in the commentary box. And now it does give me great pleasure to welcome on the top six finishers in the MotoGP eSport semi-final one here at the Mazzano World Circuit, Marco Simoncelli. So if I... Uh, in fact, actually, I've just had a word in my ear that we won't be uh, mentioning it just yet because, of course, we're still waiting for the final results to come through there, Amy. So it really was a very exciting race, that one. And, of course, race direction just having to take a little bit longer to decide who finished where. We saw all of that drama going on in the first lap. I mean, I mean our reigning world champion caught up in that. Who would have thought Trastevere here would be not in the, the final? Like. Wow! It's really exciting, isn't it? Very unpredictable. And that is exactly why eSport is so popular at the moment, especially with the MotoGP eSport Championship as well. It's been an incredible season so far. That was just a bit of a taster, really, as to what we've got to come over the latter half of this season. I mean, if, I think if people weren't a fan of eSport before, you can't argue with action like that. It is as close to what happens out there on track and what we're going to be seeing throughout the weekend as you're going to get it. Um, let's have a quick word on our current winner, Chris, Christian MM17. It doesn't look as though there'll be too much too much to kind of contradict that at all. He clearly led every single lap there. But what a weekend he's had. Started off with a go-karting accident. The, bl <laughs> the poor thing got a broken nose. Yeah, exactly. It really has been uh, a bit of a, a challenging weekend for Christian MM17. And if we look back to last year, he was one of the competitors who was in the grand final in Valencia. And he was pretty electric, really, over the few days. And his undoing, really, was just the grand final. It all came undone for him there, where he finished in second place. Didn't take that grand prize. And we were really rooted for him. We thought he was going to be the favourite going into that one. One, but he's turned things around here. He's automatically through to that grand final, and he has been untouchable in practice, in qualifying, there and thereabouts, and it has been a very impressive performance from him. I guess the one thing we should point out, though, that this isn't the last chance, even for the men on here on sat on this stage, they can take part in the upcoming challenges that are remaining and which will then qualify them, qualify them for that second semi-final. We will fill you in on more details on that a little bit later on before we close down. So all is not lost. No, absolutely right. There are four more challenges to come, which we'll fill you in a little bit later on with. But uh, we're going to be having a look at that, as we said, a little bit later on, finding out who has uh, finished, uh, well, who will be taking on what challenges in which particular order. And as you said, these guys who perhaps didn't make their way through can get themselves in with a chance of making themselves into that uh, second semi-final happening at the start of October at the Movistar Esports Centre in Madrid. OK, Matt, I think we're coming back up to you, I, potentially for confirmation of race results. Yeah, it seems so near enough confirmation, though we do have some time penalties applied to Ivan Avella and also Paul IG for some discrepancy during that races. Can't exactly recall which one. The uh, race director will certainly know better than I do. But some time penalties for them, but that has no effect. The top six are completely confirmed. They are as they were on those results and they will be going through to Valencia. The grand final, the others, the other six, they get another crack at the whip, ready to try and get their way into Madrid, into the next semi-final and make their way to Valencia there. Matt, thank you very, very much indeed. An incredible performance then, and uh, thank you for his commentary as well. Give him a round of applause here, ladies and gentlemen. It really has been a brilliant performance from, uh, from Matt Dunn. So we do need then to welcome the top six finishers from the MotoGP Esports semi-final one onto the stage. And we can have them in ascending order from first down to sixth position closest to me. So if I could welcome on stage Christian MM17, Andrew ZH, Luigi 48 GP, uh, Timothy McGarden, Adrian 26, and Ellie Ghost 555. Give them a round of applause as they come onto stage. Brilliant stuff. Great to have them all here. Absolutely incredible. And uh, Christian MM17, well, it was uh, a brilliant performance from him. Where is Christian? There we are. We've seen him up here. Christian, uh, an incredible performance from you. Uh, a challenging weekend, as we said, with the, the karting accident you had at the start of it. But it all came good for you in that semi final, didn't it? Uh, the race was very difficult. Uh, fortunately, the, the start was very well. And I can to, to make some gap. And then. I, I have to, to go very, very fast because Andrew also very, very, very fast, but fortunately I can win this race. 
incredible performance from you. And of course, uh, it doesn't really stop there. He hasn't just got the glory of this as well here, Amy. He's got a special prize here from this evening as well. He has indeed. Christian, it's time for you to receive your special award from BMW. Before we do that, though, we would like our lovely ladies to handle or hand out all of our finalists here this evening uh, their qualifying caps. So congratulations once again to all of our finalists here up on the stage. Brilliant. So they're being handed out with the Michelin caps, as you can see. They'll be placing them on their heads. Probably going to be a bit sweaty. They'll have to stick them in the wash after this one as well. It really was very hot under the collar for those guys after that one. Seems to be fitting quite well, though. There we go. Right, time for the big prize for Christian. Are you ready? So you are receiving from BMW a once-in-a-lifetime driving experience at the Nürburgring. Pretty impressive, impressive if you ask me. And here to award your prize, uh, Vladimir Bistroboda, the BMW M Head of Corporation MotoGP, if he would like to come and join us on the stage to hand out the award. Let's give him a round of applause. Fantastic stuff. Let's get them to pose for a few photographs as well. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Congratulations to Christian. Congratulations to all of our semi-finalists who have made their way through automatically into that grand final. It's been an incredible performance from them today. And it certainly isn't over yet as well. They've got another opportunity, or the competitors who perhaps didn't make their way through, and perhaps if you're watching this at home and fancy getting yourself involved in the MotoGP Esports Championship, well, good news, because there is time. We've got four more challenges left on the calendar for you to partake in. And we're going to run you through them now and tell you exactly how you can get involved in the MotoGP Esports Championship for the remainder of 2018. Well, let's have a look then at the uh, challenges, shall we? Because it has been an incredible performance from all of these guys. As we said, four more challenges for them to partake in before the end of the season. Uh, challenge five, the next one will be up, and it will be Jack Miller at the Phillip Island Circuit, his native home track. You'll be able to have a go on the Alma Pramac Ducati around there, trying to set the fastest lap time on either of the three uh, platforms that we have available in the MotoGP Esport Championship. Challenge six, though, sees this man here, a certain Valentino Rossi at Mugello. A brilliant track, a brilliant way to get yourself involved in that and you can set yourself the fastest lap time there. Then we have our only wet challenge on the calendar. This is at Sepang on Johan Zarco's Yamaha M1, the Tech 3 machine. Of course, he finished on the podium there last year. Can you get yourself inside the top three to get on to that grand final? We've got challenge eight as well, which is Andrea De Vizioso at the brand new Buriram International Circuit in Thailand. That will be the uh, last challenge out of the eight. The top three, of course, from each of those challenges will go through. So we'll have another 12 gamers at the final there, Amy. It really is incredibly exciting. Well, this is how we look leaving here tonight in Mazzano. Let's take a look. Our second semi-final, as we mentioned, will take place later this year at another live event in Madrid. Tom, I'm in Malaysia, so I'm going to hand over the reins to you. Good luck. Well, thank you very much. You're quite brave to be doing that as well there, Amy. So it is going to be a very, very exciting time here at the MotoGP Esport Championship. So thank you ever so much for joining us this evening. Congratulations to our six semi-finalists. Hopefully we'll see some of you in Madrid on the 2nd of October for that second semi-final. Let's have a look at uh, quickly, just by the way, at the final confirmation of the final standards. You can see there on your screen at the moment the top six riders who have made their way through into that final. On the right-hand side of that, though, there are still six blank spaces. So you could be getting yourself involved in in that if you uh, manage to qualify in the top three positions in either of the remaining four challenges. As we said, 12 places up for grabs. The top six, as we have done with semi-final one, will go through in semi-final two, and that will decide the 12 fastest competitors going through to the grand final in the MotoGP eSport Championship in 2018. It's going to be very unpredictable if tonight has been anything to go by, and it is going to be an incredible way to get yourself involved in this MotoGP eSport.
Sport Championship. All of these guys have had an incredible time here this evening. Lots of the uh, public who've been watching have had an incredible time here this evening, haven't they, Amy? And uh, thank you so much for joining me. Have fun in Malaysia. I'll keep it uh, nice and safe for you in uh, Madrid, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Thank you so much for joining us here for semi-final one of the MotoGP eSport Championship in 2018. I'll see you on the 2nd of October in Madrid for semi-final two.